Hey my friends, welcome back. Today, I thought it'd be a good time to kind of give you guys an update on my tricolor isopods. The vivarium doesn't look anywhere as nice and pretty as it did when it was originally set up. It was very challenging to keep the native mosses alive and thriving. The amount of water that was needed to kind of keep them going was too much water for the animals. And this species coming from Vietnam, it appreciates good quality, good humidity and good water, but not waterlogged. So I had to cut back on the watering a little bit and it made all the difference for these guys. So let's take a peek at how they're doing. look you might say I don't see any bigs are they not doing well well actually they're thriving they are absolutely everywhere within the terrarium and it's it's truth I find these ones honestly have escaped more than any of my other isopods I find them on the floor so they're all over every almost every piece of wood in this enclosure you'll find them In little nooks and crannies, there's one right there, one right there. We only started with about a dozen. And at some points in times, and I'll show you in a moment, I've counted like 50 or 60 at a time. Now, I know there are other keepers out there that are having great success with them as well and doing some sort of, you know, different types of enclosures and stuff. But I like the idea of this more natural. Now, my goal is is that I would like to somehow find a, a kind of a common ground or a balance between what I've got right now and what I had before with that nice natural look. And I think what I'm going to be looking at doing in the future is I think I'm going to be changing the top of this vivarium. So currently, this is an Exoterra. It's a Hagen product. It's got the glass doors. You can buy them at any pet store anywhere in Canada. I'm sure anywhere, almost anywhere in the world that carries Hagen products. I happen to be in Canada, and it's a big company, and it's readily available. It's got good cross ventilation off the front, and the entire top is a click-in metal screen mesh lid. And if I can cover half of that or two-thirds of that, Still getting good ventilation, but also increasing by maintaining the ambient air temperature or air humidity within this enclosure. I think I'll have better success at keeping some of the different mosses available. I have the exact same situation in this one here. The ferns, depending on which species, thrive. This is my expansus one. And they thrive, but the mosses, as you can see, most of the mosses have perished off. Now, in some of the enclosures that I also have, that I've done different things would be this one over here. And this one here is my Terrapima sazami. This is a uh, Brazilian blue tarantula. She's a, a pretty feisty female. But as you can see, by keeping it more humid, and her top of her enclosure is actually acrylic, and by keeping the, the her hers is more humid, you can notice that the fern is absolutely thriving. The ferns that are growing out of the moss is thriving. She really, really just wants to be left alone, though. Well, let's get back to the isopods. Now, it's winter time here, so it's not like I can go and just, you know, quickly access more out of the woods. But next spring, I think we're going to kind of give this one a bit more of an overhaul and replenish some of these pieces of moss and make it a bit more natural. Maybe add another, or maybe add a plant or two in here. Some sort of different types of ferns, as I showed you in the tank beside. But if we look back at how it was doing before, to see those brilliant tricolors walking around the wood and all that bright green moss, now it uh, kind of appears more like a bit of a desolate wasteland, and I don't really like the appeal of it quite the same. So we're going to do some changes. But if I, anytime I want to see some real good action in this environment, all I got to do is make it rain. And the minute that it starts raining in here, it becomes an absolute flurry of activity. I can see one walking right there already. That's a three-quarter adult. There's another one right here, which you can't see. It's out of the frame, but here's a whole bunch of them coming out, emerging out of this log here. We're just going to move the camera a little bit to the side. A whole bunch of them kind of emerging here. Here comes one walking along the log, another one underneath. They're kind of all over the place. I don't know what it is about the rain that detracts them, 
But once you really start looking for them, you see them absolutely everywhere in the enclosure. Not just in the mossy areas or under the dead wood where I would kind of expect to find them, but almost everywhere. See, they just start emerging absolutely everywhere. And amongst the leaves, I've got them on the background right now. Some in the moss. There. And you'll notice that they're all different life stages, which to me is absolutely of critical importance. Talking more about his day. These guys are still sleeping. Look at the little tiny baby there, just in amongst the leaf litter. And about three times the size of a springtail, so that gives you an idea of size. Wondering where her log went. <laughs> See, if they're going to go and hide in amongst little holes in the wood like that one just did, you can make it understand as to why you don't see them out and about as often as in something and maybe uh, some of these more sterile conditions that a lot of people keep them in in a sterile -like tub, like I do with all the other isopods. I want to see any of those. All I have to do is literally just lift that one piece of bark and they're all there. You can see, see the amount of flurry of activity just because of a little bit of rain. But because you know the coloration patterns and so forth, I think I want to get back to having some nice bright greenery in here. And I think they'll stand out a little bit more. It's usually at this point in time when I'm in here counting or just enjoying them and I'm doing maintenance is when I often find that they escape because the little doors have a, about a half inch gap when they're wide open. <laughs> they literally just walk out. Where are you going? What's the hurry? These Maraluna species are absolutely, despite their colors, they are absolutely fascinating isopods. One of the features I like best about them is their antennae. I find that their antennae with that little tiny, almost like a little tip to it, when they move around so quickly, very, very different than say a Porcilio or an Armadillidium. it is about this stick this one little stick every time it rains it's like isopods come racing to run up that stick now i do find that marilinella the species particularly the tricolors because that's honestly the only one i've ever had experience with i would very much like like to get bicolor atom which is the yellow and blue or yellow and black one the panda one but one day, but what I was getting at is they tend to be a bit higher. Oh, look at this. Where are you going? Hey, hey. That's exactly what I was talking about. Escape artists. And the only place they can get out, honestly, is more than likely either just by crawling around on something. So if the glass isn't kept reasonably clean, they could crawl up this area here and possibly the little tiny mankai could get out these things. That one there probably just crawled up the edge of the glass here. <laughs> Not like having one of the most expensive isopods on the planet, the most desirable isopods on the planet, and here I am telling you guys that they're escaping at an alarming rate. But I digress. What I was getting at before is uh, other than, uh, say, like some of the Priscilios, I find that the Marilinellas have about the same sort of level of protein requirements. 
So I do feed them. This is remnants of dried minnows. Uh, you can see there's an old snake shed there I've put in there. But overall, I find them to be one of the absolute easiest isopods to keep. And they sure seem to love this environment. Setting them up naturally seems to be the way. So with that, my friends, thank you kindly for watching as always. Thank you for your continued support. If you want to support my channel further, please consider joining me and becoming a member, and you'll see all the different perks and behind-the-scenes stuff. But for now, thanks again for watching. Till next video, take care.